Hey there, it's Tony Dubiel again, Product Solutions Architect for Ansible, focused on network automation. Today we're going to take a look at a basic network demo with the Ansible Automation Platform. This demo is a great starting point if you're new to the Ansible Automation Controller and you're really trying to examine some of the use cases that you can get started with with your network automation journey and that's what we'll do today. Some basic use cases and a basic overview. All right, so this is the Ansible Automation Controller, and what you're looking at currently is the dashboard. So the dashboard is the main landing page when you log into the controller, and there's a lot of information and historical data that's captured here, but as you can see, there's not much data at this point in time. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through our demonstration, and then we're going to circle back, and then we'll actually have some results that we can um, drill into in more detail afterwards. So let's table this for just a second. Another important category is the roles-based access. So if I click into organizations, you can see that at a very high level, we can separate um, which job templates and other constructs that we're going to talk about in more detail, um, who has access to them, and what teams are associated with an organization. So think of it as a hierarchy where the um, organization is kind of like the, the highest tier um, of separation in terms of roles-based access. And then we start to drill into that with teams and then assigning team members or users um, to the teams and associate roles, which is the privileges of who and what and what access they have to certain capabilities in the automation controller. So I'm going to go ahead and drill into this network organization. And if I click on teams, you can see that we have a net admin team and we have a net ops team. So if I click into net ops, well, we can see that we have access. Those are users that um, are assigned to that team. And then we also have the roles. So these are the privileges that they have access to. So currently this team has access to this workshop inventory. Um, with the ability um, in this team to use um, that particular inventory um, for when they're running playbooks that are a part of the accessible roles for that team. So let me go ahead and, and further take a look at this. So if we go into users, and I'll go ahead and click on the network operator here. Um, so this particular user, when I click on teams, you can see is assigned to NetOps. And then the user, when I click on roles, is a part of the Red Hat network organization, is a part of the NetOps team, and has additional capabilities to run network commands, which is a job template. And we haven't talked about job templates, but effectively a job template is how we control how uh, we will run a playbook. So think of it as the Ansible controllers, um, mechanism for running a playbook just like we do from a command line where we have you know several options and flags that we can set we can also set those same parameters um, from the automation controller and this particular user is able to execute this job template as part of their roles based access so what is a workflow first it's think about automation. If we think of automation as the ability to automate tasks in a playbook, then a workflow allows us to manage multiple playbooks and to introduce logic and conditionals and other data points that we can use um, to intelligently orchestrate our automation. Now let's double click into the conditionals that we're using in our demonstration. First off, we have blue. So blue equates to always, which means that when we kick off this workflow and start it, we will always run this node that backups our network configurations, which happens to be a job template. So that's what the JT stands for. Green indicates success. So if the backup is successful, then we move from this node to our next node, which actually is two nodes because we can introduce parallelism. So that means that we can, we can run these concurrently. So that way on success, we move to a job template that creates a network user. And at the same time, there's no dependency between the two. So we would run a job template that runs a playbook that creates a new network banner. 
And then ultimately, if we were to have a failure, we have the red. So red indicates failure, and then that means we would only run this network automation restore node in job template to roll back the config if either one of these nodes were to fail. Now let's talk about nodes for a second. We already mentioned job templates. We have other options here like approval that could either be human intervention or through REST API or other um, collection having access to an approval to move forward in the workflow. Inventory source sync, at, we may have more than one inventory source so at different um, stages in the workflow it's appropriate to pull in um, information to update that logic in our inventory. Project sync, the same thing. We might make a change. Maybe we push a change to the repository that we're using for our project. So we want to sync back to that so we have the updated information and in subsequent playbooks uh, from job templates. Um, we could also call additional workflow um, job templates. So a workflow managing other workflows. And then lastly, a management job would be more around lifecycle management of AAP. So if we create a workflow that we want to take advantage of management jobs that do um, certain cleanup types of activities and updates, then we can do that as well. Okay. 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 Let's launch the demo. Right now we have a survey that's prompting us for the banner information. And we'll go ahead and run this workflow and I'll speed it up so we can get to the conclusion. So this is our first job template, the backup network configuration. And we can see that we've successfully saved our router, four router backups to a remote server. In this job, we see the network banner template that we were able to um, use the survey to update our banner for the four routers. Okay, let's look at the output from the network banner template. We'll go ahead and focus in on router one, which is a Cisco ILSXE router. So if I click on change, we can see the JSON output. And the first part that it shows us are the commands. So these are the commands sent over the wire or otherwise known as the serialized data that's sent you know, directly to the router using command line. And the invocation shows us how we were using that banner, ILS banner module. So we set the text parameter of the banner. Uh, this banner was established again in that self-service survey that front-ended our workflow. And then we also have the banner parameter where we selected login, but we could have also selected message of the day. The login banner should show um, right as we, you know, after we log into this um, router. So we can do that from SSH. So let's take a look at that. Let's go ahead and log into router one. And you can see um, log our login message is the basic network demo banner. Here we can see the workshop workflow was successful. First, we completed the backup network configuration job template, and then we had parallelism with doing the network user and network banner templates at the same time. There was no failure, so we didn't go into our rollback situation in this particular run. All right, I'm glad you asked. So if we look at a job template, in this case, we'll look at the backup network configuration. I click into here, and we can see the settings. Um, in the settings, we see that we point to a playbook, and the playbook is actually was sourced from and pulled down from this repo. So in that repo, we have our playbooks and our roles. So in order for us to have access to them and for Ansible controller to know where they're located, we use a project. So the project is student project. So if I click on student project, uh, we can see that this is the path to the repo. And what happens is before we run our playbook, we sync with that repo and make sure that we have the updated content for each one of our files, in this case, the playbook. So when we do that, we update our um, content locally to this base project path, and then we run the playbook, right? So that's the content that's used in our job run. So um, one other thing to note here is that um, we can look at these actual files to understand, okay, how, what is the taxonomy of the playbook and how is it pointing to a role that allowed us to back up our router configurations to a remote server. So here's our git t. Let me click on our repo. And these are all of our files and the ones that uh, we care about are the network basic. So if I click on network basic workflow, we have our files. Um, under the playbook directory, we have the playbook for the network backup. 
and we can go ahead and take a quick look here. So just like any playbook, we start with the name of the playbook. The host are the groups that we're pointing to in our inventory. So for context, this is our workshop inventory. And the host was pointing to a group called network. And the network has related groups. <clears throat> and one of those is routers. And if we look at the routers, we can see that we have these three groups. So these are like parent-child group relationships. We have the Arista, we have the Cisco, and we have the Juniper groups. And each one of them has the respective uh, routers or host associated. So router one is a Cisco router in the Cisco group. And in the task, uh, what we're doing is we're running a playbook, but you'll also notice that um, it's not just task in our playbook um, that we're running directly, we're also including a role. So this is called the backup role. So when we um, include this role, we'll run the tasks that are in that role. And then once they complete successfully, then we continue on in our playbook and we have these additional tasks that we'll run um, for saving our files to a remote server. And then ultimately, because we have a restore template, we're going to use controller as code Controller as code allows us to um, configure using a playbook settings in the actual Ansible controller. So we're going to leverage that to update the um, network automation restore. And we'll take a look at that one because our workflow did not fail. But I'll show you what it would, would have looked like if it were to fail and how the rollback or the re restore would work. So we'll take a look at that. So before we do that, let's go ahead and look at our backup role. So if I go back a directory here, and we look at roles, we have the backup role, and then we have task. So in those tasks, if I select Cisco, then we can see the specific tasks that are using the Cisco iOS collection. So we have the iOS underscore config module where we do the backups, and then we're, um, you know, again, saving them um, ultimately to uh, a remote server, but first we have to collect those backups and then we're loading them into uh, memory through a register parameter. And then from that, we are um, going to clean them up a bit so that way we can remove any extra lines in that running config and then make that available as our official backups that we're using the timestamps and the other things, you know, components that we saw from, from the playbook. Let's go ahead and run the network automation restore job template. So this is a timestamp from when we previously ran the network configuration backup. So what this will do is it'll actually roll us back before we made the login banner. And lastly, let's confirm from router one itself. We'll log into router one here. And no more login banner. Hey, look, we even got a little more action on our dashboard now. That's today. And that's what was already on there before. Thank you for watching our demo on basic networking. And I hope you learned a little bit more about Ansible Automation Controller and some basic use cases like backing up configs. See you on the next demo.